Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms. You can find show notes for everything I talk about on my blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And if I miss a link, please feel free to contact me on Ravelry as Blooming Knitter. Or you can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com. Come and join the Ravelry group so you can be eligible for all the prize drawings. And be sure to introduce yourself so that I can get to know you also. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as Blooming Knitter. And don't forget to click the like button on Facebook for Knitting Blooms. How do you mark the end of summer? Is it when the kids go back to school? When the leaves turn red, orange, yellow? Or is it marked by fewer tourists and seasonal residents in your favorite places? In the Pacific Northwest, where we can pretty much count the days of summer on two hands, the blackberries have heavy scent that seems to hang in the air. Most trees are at least half red, orange, and yellow. And the activity at our local fiber stores picks up. At Barmaids, the end of summer is marked by the flood of requests for fall scents. The favorites, Betty Boo, Little Pumpkin, Hot Toddy, and the exclusive scent for Jimmy Bean's Wool, Queen's Bun, are now in season. Barmaids also has three new fall scents that are sure to be big hits. Deep Forest is a warm, rich bayberry scent. Spiced Fig can only be described as clove-stuffed fruit, complex, but brings feeling of being safe, secure, and loved. You can also get the Lolo Body Bar and To-Go Bar in Winter's Bliss, which invokes a mild sweetness with faint, fresh evergreens. How do you mark the end of summer? Order an in-season scent from Barmaids and transition to fall. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm so happy you've decided to spend your time with me. I think this is going to be a rather short show, although I have a book review and an interview for you, but I don't have any knitting to show you. Um, I, did, I did knit in the last couple of weeks, but it feels like I haven't knit that much, and I don't think I have that much progress to show you. Um, and because I have these other things that I'm going to include in the podcast this week, I just decided that I'm not going to show any knitting. And Sammy has decided to join me. <laughs> so, yeah, this past week has been all about um, Knitting in the Mitten. We left for Knitting in the Mitten um, last Wednesday, and uh, we got there pretty early, and we're helping um, set up and stuff like that, and then we spent the next three days just knitting. Now, I did get in two runs while we were there. I had planned on getting in three runs. However, on Saturday morning, I just wasn't feeling up to running. I had run Thursday and Friday morning. And I just decided that I was going to take a break. But then Sunday and Monday, when I came back on Sunday and Monday, I basically slacked off, which wasn't that great of a thing. But I am back on track with my exercise now. But Knitting in the Mitten was great. It was fabulous to see some old friends that I only see once a year at the, um, Knitting in the Mitten. And it was nice to meet new friends. And it was just a fantastic time. We, each morning, um, Thursday and Friday morning, I got up, like I said, and I ran early in the morning. It was <clears throat> about 7 o'clock both mornings, and so I ran about 3 miles, and then we decided to walk to breakfast almost exactly the same distance. I think I ran just a tiny bit further than we walked uh, for breakfast because basically I ran right past the restaurant, uh, but not too much further. And then we walked to breakfast and had a very nice breakfast and walked home. Now, or walked back to the retreat. Now, breakfast was provided at the retreat and um, that was great. However, we just wanted to get in a walk in the morning to get some extra steps in. I was trying to keep up with my at least 15,000 steps. And it was just a nice brisk walk in the morning to, to get out and have breakfast and then um, come back to the retreat house and pretty much stay there the rest of the day. So that's what we did both fr uh, Thursday and Friday morning. Um, and then 
pretty much during the day, all we did was sit and knit. Um, there was a couple times that we got up and went for a short walk um, in the middle of the day. You know, you're sitting for 8, 9, 10, 12 hours, and you just got to get up and move. So um, we did do that a couple of times. We took a couple of walks, and um, it, but it was just a fabulous time. Uh, Kari, who is Kagi TM of the High Fiber Diet, she hosts the uh, retreat. And it just really was a really nice time to see everybody and just to hang out and knit and just fabulous. If you ever have a chance to go to a knitting retreat, I highly, highly recommend knitting retreats, as you've heard me say many, many times before. I hope that you have noticed that I got my new camera. I'm hoping that you see a vast improvement in the quality of the video. I did get my new camera and at first I was thinking that I was going to have to send it back but because um, it had like a somewhat of a little rattle to it but I found out that it was um, part of the image stabilizer and I've done a little testing with it and it so far has been working great and I'm very excited about being able to produce a a better quality podcast for you guys Plus, this particular camera records in MP4 versus the, I think it's ACVHD, I think it is, something like that, um, which the MP4 is like a file size that's about half the size of the other, the other type of recording. So I'm hoping that um, it makes my compression, my basically my um, import and my compression and all that stuff a little easier and also hopefully the file will be a little bit smaller. I don't know how much smaller it will be but hopefully it'll be a little bit smaller. I think I finally worked out the um, kinks as far as with the new software and everything um, so hopefully that will that will all work out and like I said before I am planning on working on a tutorial for starting a podcast and I will include all the information about what kind of equipment what what's the best equipment and all that in that tutorial one thing I have noticed on this camera is that um, on the last I think it was the last episode when I was showing my high high needles and I held them up to the camera and I said my right versus my left because I was looking at the screen um, that the camera has on it and it wasn't reversed but this camera is reversed so when I point this way I'm actually seeing myself point the other way so that's going to take a little getting used to, but I don't think it'll be that difficult because I try not to really look at myself on the camera other than when I'm showing you something just to make sure that I get my um, whatever I'm showing you in the camera screen. So that'll take a little getting used to for me. So like I said, I hope you enjoy um, the new quality of the camera and let me, let me know your feedback on how, how it looks to you. So we have a couple of knit-alongs going on right now. We have the um, North Cabin Fibercrafts knit along going on, and you, we had two months, September and October, where you could order yarn or fiber from North Cabin Fibercrafts, and then now from November to December, through the end of December, you can knit or spin your North Cabin Fibercrafts uh, yarn or fiber, and then enter it to win a prize. We have. Um, one braid of fiber and a project bag, a big project bag. And also, there will be at least one $20 gift certificate uh, as a prize as well. There may be two, depending on how many people enter. But um, there's going to be at least one $20 gift certificate to North Fiber, um, North Cabin Fiber Crafts. So, hopefully, you purchased your yarn or fiber in September or October, and you can join in with us. There's already, um, I think, three or four uh, finished objects so far. I started my socks, which again, I'm not showing you any knitting this week, so I don't have them over here to show you, but I did start my socks at Knitting in the Mitten, and I have the toes done on both of them. Um, that's about as far as I've gotten. I think there's a tiny bit on one of the legs, um, or one, I'm sorry, one of the feet, 
but not very far. I am trying to work on those when I do some walking. But this week I haven't done much walking. Um, I feel like I'm trying to get caught up after being gone for, for four or five days for um, knitting in the mitten. But it's really because my boss and the other guys have been in the office until like 2 o'clock every day. Usually they leave the office by 10. So by them being in the office until 2 o'clock, that's four hours that I miss out on being able to get other stuff done. Now I can still do stuff that's not work related during that time. But um, a lot of times I don't like to pull the knitting out and stuff like that. Only because usually they're, you know throwing things at me that I have to put stuff down anyway. So I try to do things easy like, you know, surf Pinterest or Instagram or something like that, you know, look at things like that, that I can easily put down and it's not going to interrupt my flow. So yeah, I haven't worked on those that much, but I did get them started. I also started spinning my fiber, which I showed you before. I will show you that the next time I record, uh, but I did start my fiber on my ladybug. I have two uh, eight ounce or sorry two four ounce braids that I'm going to to spin separately and then ply together now what I did I looked at both braids together and I lined them up together and what I noticed was that they were almost identical in color in color repeats and whatnot so I am spinning them both straight out and um, then I will ply them to ply them and I am trying to um, spin it a little thicker than I normally do as as you know if you've been a long time viewer I typically spin my fiber pretty thinly so I am trying to spin it a little thicker just so that the two ply will be about a DK weight I'm not really sure exactly what it will be but um, it's about I'm hoping that it will be about a DK weight so we'll see how that turns out I'm really excited about getting that spun up I'm really enjoying spinning the fiber I think it is I think it's BFL. I can't remember for sure, but I think it's BFL. And um, like I said, I am very much enjoying spinning that fiber from Lori. So if you have your North Cabin Fiber Crafts um, yarn or fiber, please start working it up so you can post in that thread for a chance to win. We also have the mystery knit along, and I am really excited about all the chatter that's going on in the um, in the thread. Uh, I think we're up to like 80 some projects, which is really exciting. And then there's just lots of chatter on the thread. I did release clue number four um, a little bit early. It would actually be just about um, probably just about midnight, um, probably a little bit after midnight. Um, Australia time for the girls that are in Australia. I did that yesterday. So um, the girls in the United States got it a little early and um, I think there's been people that already have re finished clue number four. I personally am still on clue number two. I am on the second repeat of clue number two. I believe I have maybe five to ten rows left of that repeat uh, before I finish up the second repeat and then I have still one more repeat of clue number two before I can go on to clue number three. So um, it's coming along. I'm trying to get my transitioning to winter socks completed so that I can get that um, pattern posted as soon as the mystery knit along has been completed. I don't know if that's going to happen. It might be later in December that I get around to posting the um, the socks that go with it. But so far, my testers are doing a fabulous job completing their socks. <laughs> I started my second sock, although the first sock is not done yet. I was taking the advice of, I believe it was Teresa, who said she does her socks um, two at a time on one long magic loop to stay in pattern. And I thought that was a good idea. That that probably was what I should have done. So I stopped my first sock. I believe I had like one repeat past the heel. I stopped my first sock and stuck that aside for a bit and cast on my second sock. And then I'm working up to that same point um, on the second sock. And then as soon as I get to the same row, I will pick up all the um, stitches and for both socks and then keep going that way. Hopefully that will work for me. I have only done socks, um, two socks on one long magic loop 
once before. Actually, I think I did two socks on two double points. I mean, two um, circulars, not one long magic loop. So this will be a little bit different, but I wasn't really fond of the two socks at a time. Um, I think mostly because I felt like I was making no progress. But because I, with a pattern sock, I don't want to stop. I don't want to go back and forth like I do on my stockinette socks because I will forget which row I'm on in the pattern. So I think maybe I'm going to try this and see how it goes. But um, yeah, the mystery knit along is going fabulously. And we have a drawing. I did a drawing again for um, the, from the chatter thread. And um, like I said before, and you know what? I didn't go over to see if she has a project page, so let me just go and look. Because I did mention last time that you must have a project page. And unfortunately, she does not have a project page. So I'm going to have to draw another number. And hopefully I can do this quickly. Um, I'm not good at, I'm not good at, um, let's see, I'm not good at figuring out let me, I guess I could just go back, hang on. I'm not good at figuring out which page, hang on, let me go back, the, um, the post is on. But this number is fairly close to the other number, so I'm hoping that I can get there quickly. Okay, let me just take a quick look. Hang tight, hang tight. And then I have to go make sure that she has a, a project page. Oh, I'm pretty sure that she has a project page. Hang on one second. See before I announce who wins. Um, yes, she does. Okay. Um, so let me go back. It is number two twelve. That's not focusing. Why is that not focusing? Oh, because it's trying to get my face. There we go. <laughs> the camera. It has a little box on it that shows. Um, that shows where my face is, so whenever I move, the, the box moves. So the number is 212, and that is K Michigan, and that's Kathy. So congratulations, Kathy. You get a um, pattern of your choice of $7 or less, and she does have a pattern page for um, the mystery knit along, and I'll just give you a quick look at um, her progress so far. So if you don't want to see progress, go away real quick. Okay, hang on. Here's Here it is. Let's see if it's going to focus. It a, takes a little bit longer on this camera to focus, but... And I have to figure out the direction, but there it is. There's her progress so far. So congratulations again, Kathy. You are the winner this week from the Chatter Thread. I have to remember to do that next time to make sure that um, the person who wins has... Um, a project page. So if you don't already have your project page set up for the mystery knit along, get out there and get that set up because I will be drawing another winner the next time I record. Okay, so we are having a VKN this weekend. Um, that would be on the 16th, November 16th. Because of when I, when I did that um, impromptu recording for but during Rhinebeck, we kind of got off. Usually I was doing the VKNs um, on weeks that I didn't record and that I had a tutorial. But right now we're, we're on that schedule for on the week that we record. I think I'll eventually get it back on. We'll have to skip a week or something. But um, we'll get it back on the, the tutorial week. But for right now, because last week was knitting in the mitten, and then so we didn't have a VKN last week, and then I'm recording again this week. We are going to have a VKN on Saturday this week because I know next Saturday I am going to a play. So there will be no VKN next Saturday. Um, so we are having one this Saturday, the 16th. Hopefully you have watched this. Um, you, I probably won't be posting it to early, until early Saturday morning. But hopefully you have a chance to watch it or you have a chance to check the thread. And um, come and join us for the VKN. Okay, and now I have a book review for you. Now, I mentioned earlier that I was doing a lot of video editing. I have a book review, which I'm going to show you, and then I also have an interview that I ha did a couple weeks ago after I last recorded. But first, I'm going to give you the book review. Here it is. 
This is a review of the ebook Cascadia, which is published by Cooperative Press. You can purchase the ebook on Ravelry as well as on the Cooperative Press website for $16.95, or you can purchase the print and the ebook version for $26.95 on the Cooperative Press website. This book contains six sweaters, including two mom and me sweaters and one men's sweater. It also includes two patterns for neckwear, two patterns for hats, and a pair of socks. This book is named Cascadia after the Cascade Mountain Range in the Pacific Northwest. And all of the designers, as well as the yarns that are used in this book, are either based out of the Pacific Northwest or are from the Pacific Northwest. I have really enjoyed reading the question and answer section for each of the designers that are included in this book, as well as the tidbit sections from the yarn suppliers as well. Like the ebook Hitch, which I previously reviewed, this book contains pattern notes and stitch techniques at the beginning of each pattern. Although I probably won't knit everything in this book, there are a few sweaters as well as a shawl that I will definitely be knitting from this book. The first one being Beacon Hill by Jane Richmond. This is a cardigan sweater with a very nice textured stitch on the whole sweater as well as a shawl collar. This sweater looks to be like it would be quite warm um, on a cold day and I wonder if you could even pull up the collar to uh, be more like a turtleneck. I bet you could probably do that um, with some kind of a shawl pin or something to pin the front closed if it's really cold and you need to keep your neck warm. The next sweater is the first of the Mom and Me sweaters. It's Britannia by Tin Can Knits. This sweater has a lot of cable and lace details. I really like this sweater. However, you definitely would need to wear some sort of camisole underneath the sweater because the lace eyelets are quite large. However, I almost always wear a camisole or a t-shirt underneath my sweaters because it helps to keep the, uh, the sweater a little cleaner on the inside. So that would definitely not be a problem for me. The next pattern in the book is by Emily Wessel and it's Red Cedar. It is a scarf and what I like about this pattern is that it has two versions, a fingering weight and an Aran weight version. It has some nice lace detail and it just is a beautiful, beautiful scarf. The next sweater I'm going to talk about is the Courtney sweater by Megan Goodacre. This sweater is a very simple sweater with some nice eyelet detail around the collar as well as the forearm of the sweater. It is mostly stockinette with a boat neck and it is just simply elegant. The next pattern that I most definitely will be knitting is the Raven's Nest by Judy Marples. This is a top down shawl with stockinette section at the top and lace detailing at the bottom section. It also has a very nice pico bind off along the edge. The next sweater is Wake by Holly, and I'm not really sure how to pronounce Holly's last name, but the sweater is a lace cardigan sweater. It looks to be like the lace is quite intricate, but I bet you it's simpler than you might think. This sweater is constructed in pieces and is seamed together and a button band is added at the end and there are both charted and written instructions for the lace. As I mentioned before, there are two hat patterns that are included in this book as well. But since I am not a huge hat fan, I probably will not be knitting the hats in this book. As I have noticed with other cooperative press books, there is a section for abbreviations and resources in the back of the book. I didn't talk about or show all the patterns in this book, but you can see all 11 patterns on Ravelry or on the Cooperative Press website. I highly recommend this book. The photography alone is enough reason to go out and buy this book. Again, you can purchase the ebook version on Ravelry or on the Cooperative Press website for $16.95, or you can order the print book 
which comes with an ebook version for $26.95, and that can be purchased on the Cooperative Press website. So I hope you enjoyed that review of the ebook for Cascadia. Um, I did it about the same that I did last time, but um, it was a little bit different because I am using different software, but I hope you enjoyed that review. And if you would like an opportunity to win a copy of the ebook Cascadia, then just hop on over to the thread on Ravelry and enter to win. I just want you to let me know what your favorite pattern is in that book. So if you uh, want to see all the patterns, first go over to the Ravelry uh, page for the for the ebook, and I will link that in the thread uh, for the contest. And then come back and let us know which pro which uh, project you like the best in that book. I'm sure that it will be very difficult to choose because I know that I wouldn't be able to choose just one project in that book that I really, really love because there are several that I really like that I am definitely going to be knitting in the future. Not sure how near in the future, but definitely at some point. So go enter to win. And here's where I, where I will um, put in the interview that I did um, a couple weeks ago. And um, I do want to warn you that we had a bit of te technical difficulties. It was the first time that I had done a Skype record call. And I found out that my computer, although it was top of the line when I bought it, you know, three and a half, four years ago, it really struggled <laughs> with the recording. So, um, luckily, Ariana had recorded it as well, and her recording was a little bit better than mine, so uh, she sent me her recording, and I was able to piece it together and make it work. There are times that my voice is not with my mouth, but you'll still get the gist of the, the conversation. All the vocals are there, and um, it just is a little awkward at times <laughs> because the way I'm talking and and the voice is not synced exactly but I think you will enjoy it and uh, I hope I hope you enjoy uh, meeting Ariana hello and welcome to quilt moxie the podcast where quilt moxie meets craftsy.com an online community dedicated to providing the best education and resources for crafters join me Ariana, your host, and come along on my video journey where I participate in the Craftsy Online classes and community. Meet up with us online at quiltmoxie.com or at your favorite hangout, Craftsy, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter. Check the credits at the end of the show for more. You can also subscribe to our mailing list to get your next and every episode with show notes delivered directly to your email as soon as the episode is available. It's as simple as dropping your email address and checking Receive Podcast by email. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to take some time today to introduce you to a new friend of mine. I met um, Ariana in a VKN recently, and I got to know her a little bit during the VKN, and I found out that she has a podcast. So I went over and watched her podcast, and she's quite interesting person. So I wanted to get have uh, you guys get to know her a little bit. So Ariana, can you introduce yourself and give us a little bit of information about you? Well, thank you so much, Tina. In fact, uh, your podcast was one of my favorite podcasts that sort of introduced me to podcasting. Um, I just started my podcast in I think it was April. And it's all about all the classes that I'm doing with Craftsy. The podcast itself was basically a tribute to my mom. So my goal when I started the podcast really was to get my mom to watch my podcast all about knitting. And um, my mom is non-techy. She doesn't even have a bank card. So, so far, I've been able to get her to get an iPad and she's receiving my podcast by email. So, oh, awesome. yes, uh, I'm really enjoying it. So the way I started my podcast was really by watching all the other podcasts that were out there that I didn't even knew, know existed until I bought my son the MacBook Pro, which I ended up using in 2012. So lo and behold, all these podcasts are out there. And I said to myself, 
I want to do a podcast too. And I didn't really need a reason. I just felt that I had to do it. So Ariana, how did you get started knitting? Well, uh, like a lot of you, uh, I was taught how to knit in elementary school. I went to elementary school in Germany and we were taught right away how to knit and crochet and knitting was not something that stuck. I didn't really like knitting at all and I never even thought that I was going to be knitting in the future, but I did like crochet and um, I never really continued with it until I went to Germany with my mom on a once in a lifetime trip. She brought me there. I was closing in on just about becoming 50 years old. So my mom was sort of depressed. She had a daughter. She's almost 50. And so we went home to visit her hometown in Berlin. And I learned how to knit a pair of socks on DPNs by my aunt Waltraut. I figured it was something cool to do with mom while I was visiting. Well, lo and behold, I came back and I couldn't stop knitting. It was just crazy. I was knitting anything I could see. I was knitting yarn and undoing yarn to re-knit yarn, just to knit. So <laughs> I finished some of the sock projects that my mom had started over the years. She was a knitter. In fact, she wanted to open a wool shop. So she had all these UFO projects that I started finishing up. And after one year of knitting in denial, I came to the conclusion that I actually am a knitter or I should find out more about it. So I decided I was going to knit with my mom's yarn. And that's when I came upon Craftsy. And Craftsy was uh, actually uh, one of my quilting buddies. She says, you have to go and sell your quilting patterns on Craftsy, which is what I did. But what happened was I started signing myself up for all these knitting classes. And the first one that I signed up for was the Ferrile Vest class by Mary Jane Mucklestone. And I've done quite a few since then. And so that's what your podcast is all about, is you going through these craftsy courses that you've taken, um, taken to learn how to do different techniques in knitting. That's right. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. When I started the podcast, I had finished the Feral Vest. I had a Feral Vest. And I just felt uh, I had to put this in a podcast because how long am I going to be a newbie knitter? And, y you know, um, I think it was something important to show other people when they're doing something for the first time. So if I would have started the podcast now, now that I know how to knit, I don't think the, the same value is there. So what I'm showcasing in the podcast are all the little trials and tribulations and mistakes and hiccups and they're all there. And that's what that experience is doing something for the first time uh, videotaped. So I went from Feral Vest and then I went into Celtic Cables. That was my debut. And then I ended up doing uh, the Toe Up Socks with uh, Donna Dracunas and um, Myra, Myra Wood, she has the Crazy Lace Cardigan, which I'm still doing. I've got Knit to Flatter that I've done on, uh, that I'm starting on. I've done double knitting and there's so many more. In fact, on Crafts, you can see all the classes that I've signed up for. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing. Yeah, and you talk about being a, a newbie knitter, but you've done all these crazy techniques and different things that most newbie knitters w won't just go out and do. You know, most newbie knitters are knitting scarves and dishcloths for years and years. And you've done Fair Isle and Entrelac and socks and cables and all these crazy things. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's it. So um, I, I can say that now that I started my podcast at the same time that I started my knitting career. And the reason that it's happening is because I've got Craftsy with these experts that are showing their specialty and they sort of guide you through everything that you have to learn. And you just copy what they do. And I'm stunned at the results. I, like, I cannot believe that I'm doing it. But I don't know that some of these techniques are advanced techniques. And what Craftsy doesn't tell you is 
oh, you better not sign up for this class because you should have had 10 years of knitting under your belt. It's, it's no, nowhere is it there. I just look at the project and I say, hey, that would be kind of fun to do. My mom has that yarn that I'm getting from her vintage, st vintage stash. I'm going to try it out. And so that's what I've been doing. And uh, I don't know that they're advanced techniques. It's just I follow their instructions. And when you're guided by an expert, your game, uh, I think, goes to the next level. And what I like, what I like about your podcast is that when you go through these classes, you are actually going through all of the projects because these crafty courses, a lot of them have multiple projects that they use to teach you the techniques. And what I like about your podcast is that you show all these different projects that you've done through the class. And see, I would I would just watch the watch the class and not necessarily do the project, but you make it look so fun just to go and do all the projects that are in the class. Well, I'm glad you think so. Uh, I'm thrilled to hear that as feedback. It's something I learned from my hubby because uh, he's able to sort of take a project, go from A to Z and go all the way through. The other thing with the craftsy classes that I give myself permission is to make all the mistakes that you want to make because it is a class lesson. And I figure uh, I'm getting wool from my mom and it's all free because she has stashed it. She's not using it. Nobody, you can't find it in the store. It's just old vintage wool, which is still great. And I give myself permission to do anything I want with it. So I think um, the, the, the classes, the way they're, they're designed, each of the projects builds on one another. And I'm exactly like you. When I look at like some of the quilting um shows i know all those techniques but once i'm going to get to the part where i'm going to do maybe a quilting class in a future podcast i will go through all of the uh the projects as well because i've noticed that even though i go through the class and i look and i said yeah i could do that it's only once i decided to actually do it do i realize how easy that expert has made it look and it's not as easy as she makes it look for me even though I thought I already knew how to do it so I would encourage um, craftsy participants to actually do the projects you learn so much by the the projects that the teachers have selected to show you so you talk about using uh, your vintage yarn in your podcast and also, what, I, what I've uh, seen you do in a lot of your podcasts is that if you come across, if you run out of yarn or if you do, um, you know, just you adjust the project the way that it fits your style. And I really like that about you. You know, again, you're saying you're a newbie knitter, but you are you seem to be advanced enough to be able to take the project in a direction that that works for you. Well, you know, um, I find that the more classes I'm taking and I've started on the knitting path of Craftsy is that all of these crafts sort of build on one another. So uh, when I uh, when I learned Celtic cables or Fair Isle, the techniques I learned there, I'm bringing those skills to the next class that I'm taking. And it's sort of building and I try to incorporate what I've already learned. Now, of course, I'm also an artist in other crafts, uh, multi-crafts, craftual, like many of the um, podcasters that I'm listening to and, and watching. Uh, I'm a quilter and a painter and all sorts of other things. And all of the skills that you have in the other arts, you bring to your knitting. And I think that's probably what's going on. Plus also the fact that uh, nobody says that you cannot use this tool while you're knitting. Like for example, I noticed that I happen to like a crochet hook a lot when I'm knitting because I'm convinced that it's like a knitting needle with training wheels. So that's how I use my crochet hook. Yeah, and I noticed that you did a couple tutorials showing um, some different techniques with the crochet hook that I had never thought about doing. And I really enjoyed the tutorial that you showed for the um, the surprisingly stretchy bind off with the crochet hook. Oh, I'm so thrilled about that because you're the one who sort of inspired me to do the tutorials in the first place because 
part of your podcast is I love watching your tutorials. So I wanted to contribute something that nobody has really done, something to add to all the tutorials that the podcasters are doing. And I, and I noticed uh, that I like to use a crochet hook. So there's many more tutorials coming, but with a crochet hook or something else that um, I guess you wouldn't find in a knitting book, but it seems to be working. I have quite a few under my belt uh, still to come. Yeah, I like your take on on some of the tutorials that you've done because, like I said, I I've never seen the Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off done with a crochet hook. But knowing crochet myself, it makes total sense. <laughs> oh well, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. You get did you get a chance to try it out yet? I haven't tried it out yet, <laughs> but um, it definitely makes total sense. I oh, I really like that technique, and I am definitely going to try that out. Oh, nice, nice. There's more. Just wait. The, the next one's going to include a sharpener. So, oh. yes, yes. <laughs> so um, for many knitters, uh, going to fiber festivals and buying new yarn is a big thing when, um, when you're a knitter. Have you done either of those things? With your, you talk about using your vintage stash. Well, I, I can barely control myself. So um, my hubby whom I decided to uh, to knit some socks for, he will not uh, use my mom's vintage stash. So naturally I had to go out into a local yarn shop and shop. And it's so difficult to not buy more. I sort of have to sort of say, okay, I'm gonna stick with the vintage yarn from my mom's collection, which I have no idea how much more there is. I'm sure I've only touched the tip of the iceberg. So I don't think it's fair to the wonderful yarn that she has. And she always wanted to see it, you know, expressed in some way that it's not getting expressed. And uh, it's so easy for me to just shop down some more yarn and knit up a different pattern than the ones that are on the craftsy repertoire. But I, I think it's important that I sort of restrain myself for now. I know in the future I'm gonna end up somewhere going wild at a fiber festival and maybe even spinning because all the other podcasters are doing that. So I'm quite aware that's looming in the future. So you talk about using your vintage stash, but you're taking that stash and you're doing some um, some dyeing on your own, so you're not having the same colors all the time. Oh, that's right. And that was another, well, you were the inspiration for that as well. I was watching your dyeing tutorials and I was gonna go out and get myself some Kool-Aid and we don't have that here. But what we do <laughs> have is food dye. And I used your recipe uh, with the vinegar and the water and the whole nine yards and the microwave and I did it with food dye with the wool that my mom gave me because she had some vintage Reggie yeah, she had a big bag of I think what is it 20 skeins 10 skeins of the white and a whole bunch of other ones anyway wonderful yarn but you get a little bit bored um, knitting the same colors over and over so I said well I'm gonna try and dye that and lo and behold, it worked out really nicely. In fact, uh, I really like the colors that came out. And it sort of keeps me from purchasing more yarn, which I can barely <laughs> contain myself. <laughs> yeah, I like the colors you, you've dyed too, because the sock that's behind you there is one of the things that you've, that you've dyed um, with the pink and green. And those are my colors. <laughs> Well, I love those colors too, and I put that sock up because it's the last um, class that I was working on on double knitting. It might be a solitary sock, so I may have to frame it. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to put the other sock together. But yeah, that wool, when I dyed it, I actually took the full skein as is and put it into a mason jar and dyed it like that. And I was just stunned that it would actually work, and the color does not come out. It just stays. So. I'm impressed with your dyeing technique or the yeah. food dyeing technique that we both came up with now. Yeah, fabulous. So do you, um, like many other podcasters, do you do prizes and contests on your uh, podcast? 
Well, I've been dying to because I like the idea of uh, watching the podcasts and I ever I, every time I listen or I watch a podcast, I get the feeling like there's a party going on and they're giving away prizes and contests and I've been trying to think how could I do a contest or a prize on my podcast. Now, I consider, okay, can I give away skeins of vintage yarn and I didn't think that was something I could do, but I thought maybe with Craftsy, maybe a free Craftsy class or something like that. Well, I took um, took your advice actually, and I contacted Craftsy to find out if there's anything that we can do, and I'm announcing it here on your, your podcast. Uh, Craftsy has come back to me, and they're willing to do something in the way of a contest. So I haven't worked out the details, but I'm very excited to do that so that we can uh, start having a party at Quilt Moxie, the, part, the podcast, the group. So I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. And you have a Ravelry group as well, right? Yes, I started that. I was there. Um, and, and that's also sort of a little funny story. I can barely navigate around Ravelry, but it's an amazing website. So I just followed what all the podcasters that I like are doing, and they all had groups. So I set up my little group, and I'm playing there in my sandbox. And lo and behold, guess who shows up? Gwen Bortner, who is one of my teachers on Entrelock at Craftsy. And I'm here, oh my God, I thought I was here by myself. So um, my group needed to be sort of polished up. So I'm getting that all ready for the big party that we're going to have with our contest by Craftsy. Uh, by the way, episode three and four is all about Entrelac. And I did get Gwen Bortner to visit our podcast, I was just flabbergasted that she would agree to have an interview. It's, it, it was just so amazing that the Craftsy teachers are so accessible. So you, are, you were a quilter before you became a knitter. And um, you have mentioned something about a quilt ruler. What is that? Well, when I joined Craftsy, it was because my quilting buddy, Linda, she says, go to Craftsy, set up your little shop there to sell your patterns. I have a couple of quilting patterns and that was the whole goal because I have so many more quilting patterns that I have not put together because I've been knitting for the past I don't know how long since I started but there was a quilting ruler that I've got patent pending and I've got some quilters classroom testing it and it's to create cath cathedral windows which is one of the quilt patterns that's traditional it's very very it's a vintage pattern but we've got a modern twist on it. And I'm hoping to sort of bring our podcast back a little bit to quilting because after all, I'm quilt moxie. So I'm hoping that the knitters will be quilting because I know one day I'm gonna be spinning and I'm a quilter. So I think all the crafts belong to everybody. We should be all doing yeah. everything. Well, we'll look forward to that, that quilt ru ruler. I'm not a quilter, but there's been times that I've wanted to try one of those little jelly roll quilt things. I've, I've never been really good at it because I know quilting, you have to be able to sew a straight line and that, that's just not me. I can't do that. But I figure I could do a little jelly roll thing, but I've just never um, actually done it. But I thought it was kind of neat that they could take the jelly rolls and create a quilt in very little time. Well, you're telling me that you're not a quilter. Can I say to you that I'm not a spinner? Are you going to laugh in my face and tell me that I'm not a spinner? I'm already knitting. Yeah. So keep watching the podcast. You're going to see maybe you are a quilter. You just don't know. Yeah, it. maybe. <laughs> well, Ariana, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm so glad that you uh, took the time to, uh, to come on the podcast so that everyone else can uh, get to know you as well as I have. I really enjoyed chatting with you on VKNs and I hope to see you more in the future and I'm definitely going to be following up on your future podcasts. Well, thank you so much, Tina. I'm so thrilled that you invited me. I had such a great time and I'm glad to have met you. So, Ariana, thank you again for doing that interview with me. I really enjoyed talking to you on the interview. And I, like I said before, I really have enjoyed speak, speaking to you on the VKNs as well. And I really do look forward to your next podcast. 
So I hope everybody will go and check out the Quilt Moxie podcast. I, when I started watching her podcast, I started from the first podcast and then just kind of watched them all the way through. I just could not get enough of them. So I hope you will go and check out her podcast and see all the things that she's doing with Craftsy. And that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the show this week. It's a lot of different stuff that I don't normally do. So I hope it uh, works out. You know, I hope you enjoy the things that I've done differently with the podcast. And um, I hope you will stop by next week. I hope next week to have a tutorial for you. Again, not sure what it's going to be. I have several tutorials that I need to get done um, that I've been thinking about doing for weeks now. And I just keep putting them off and putting them off. And, you know, so <laughs> we'll see which one pops up and which one I finally get done and um, get get posted up for you. So I hope you have a great week. I hope your knitting blooms this week. Please send me feedback on how you enjoyed the podcast or things that you thought needed to be changed for the podcast. I always want to have improving, want to make improvement, improvements for the podcast. So I need to know. You need to tell me when things don't work out for you. I had a, uh, one person mention uh, they had some difficulty downloading episode number 122. I'm not sure what issue she had, but nobody else had that problem. So I hope uh, she worked all that out. And um, yeah, so always get in contact with me if you have questions or comments about the podcast. So that's all for now. Bye. Do you have a favorite fall scent? We know that a lot of Barmaid's customers do. For example, Betty Boop has been a top seller for the last nine years. It is a mixture of of bitter, orange, and orchid. It sounds a bit floral, right? But Betty Boop is not floral. She's actually quite spicy. Little Pumpkin also has its very devoted fans with its fresh from the oven top notes of buttery pumpkin not to be outdone by the middle notes of cloves and allspice. Hot Toddy, which was introduced last year, was such a hit that he's back. Hot buttered rum, oh yum. Then there's Queen's Bun, a custom scent made exclusively for Jimmy Bean's wool. Can only be described as cinnamon buns fresh from the oven and delicious enough for royalty. If your local store doesn't have these in stock, ask them to special order them for you. Otherwise, order them online at www.bar-maids.com.